design engineer at Amgen, uh, which is also uh, based here in Southern California. This is my third Graphonicon, um, and I'm very excited that Grafana came to my backyard this year. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about a question that I think um, all, is always on our minds if you've been in operations or if you currently are in operations. I'll go ahead and do the show of hands questions now. Um, but how many of you are on call like regularly? Quite a few. And how many of you manage teams that are on call? Yeah, also quite a few, right? So I think like on call is something that um, uh, doesn't get enough attention from a measurement perspective. And I think that's kind of a, a thing that we're going to try to go through quickly here. We'll go ahead and go with our grayscale um, and, and see how we do. Quick background about Amgen. Uh, Amgen is a, a values-based company deeply rooted in science and innovation to transform new ideas and discoveries into medicines for patients with serious illnesses. Um, Amgen is, a, is an end-to-end -end biotech company, and our mission really is to serve the patients. Um, if you'd like to learn more, please go ahead and visit our, our website on amgen.com. So yeah, let's see if we can get back to color. Okay, I think we're going to be all right. But that's still. Still grayscale? Okay. Uh, no worries. Uh, let's see. Okay, so. Um, we're going to just quickly talk a little about an imaginary ops team uh, at Amgen. Uh, we're, I'll introduce Sally, Harry, Ming, and their very important customer, Judy. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how to collect this kind of on-call data into Grafana. And I think that there's a lot of value in uh, collecting that, no matter the size of your team or the size of your organization uh, today. We're going to look at it from kind of two categories, the operations point of view and then also the on-call management point of view. Um, and so to kind of get started, let's, let's talk about how we start collecting things. Um, from the beginning. So this is real data, even though the names are fake. Um, but you really just got to start collecting and determine what your reliable source of the, your on-call rotation and the, the call data is. Some people manage their on-calls, uh, like with a SaaS provider. Um, there's several here that are, are, have been um, at, the, at the Grafana conference. You can look at Grafana integrations and find a, a ton of different ways to manage your on-call teams. You could use things like uh, CSV files or you know, Google Calendar. If you have Office 365, you can use Outlook. Whatever you're doing today, there's a way to get it in. So the way I'm doing this data is from Telegraph or FluentD. Um, I've been playing a lot with FluentD in the last year, so I use Ruby just to run like a Telegraph um, execution to get the JSON, parse it into uh, Influx, and then that lets me store the data. So I choose an interval that makes sense for me. And depending on how many teams you have or how frequently your on-call is changing, that's up to you. Um, one little gotcha, just a reminder that your telephone numbers are often um, strings because of things like plus signs and hyphens. And Telegraph will ignore string fields by default. Um, so you need to kind of adjust for that. So what you're seeing at the bottom is just like an example of, of Ming and Sally and Harry's data coming in compared between Influx and Elasticsearch as a combined output. Um, that was just a way for me to kind of get an idea of like, what am I getting in my responses? And then um, can kind of play with it from there. So let's take a look at the uh, operations use case. Um, Judy here says that her, uh, the app errors are up and the users are feeling down. It's the middle of the night. Who's there? Sometimes we have external teams that aren't reliant on our on-call schedule, and they don't know exactly who to reach out to when something has happened, even though, in theory, you should have had like a distribution list or something where the on-call person is already taking care of a specific problem. right? So what can Judy do? Well, technically, they could just expand a row. So on the bottom, if we have our on-call details here, and there's a little panel row, if you guys don't use rows in Grafana, it's great, because the queries don't actually fire until you click on the uh, collapsed panel. And we can see things like the current on-call contact is Ming, and the additional contact info, the time that Ming started the on-call rotation, and as well as when the, that rotation will end. And then we can see this, this particular error rate 
um, on this application has already gone up to escalation layer number two. So we seem to have a dropped uh, incident. And this connects the user, right? Because in the end, from an operations perspective, you want to connect people that have questions to the people who can give them answers. Whether or not this turns out to be a, a, you know, something that's terrible or not, what I recommend is to think about your on-call data should be taking actions by people, right? So we're, if we're on call and the people are the people are on call, you should be putting this data with your dashboards that have your service level objectives. So depending on how far along you are in the maturity of thinking about your business metrics and where you really need to get a person involved, you can decide to like build your dashboards with an extra panel, um, a, a panel row at the bottom and just fill that in. So say you know, at a company the size of Amgen, um, we have you know, dozens of teams. We can just find a tag identifier and then um, make this all templated and so that you get the right on-call person for the right application. Um, let's take a look at uh, like a management use case as well. So if, if you think about like some of us that have been on call for you know, days and days at a time, a lot of times we kind of go off of our feeling of whether we're feeling burnt out or not. But imagine you had a graph where you could actually see the person's face that you're going to have to call and say, hey, get up and fix this problem. <laughs> and this is also a management um, use case to say, what if we know that in the course of a year, everyone shared their equal time on call, but the on-call experience wasn't exactly even, right? Um, we see that Sally actually had like over 70 incidents to respond to, and that is ne not necessarily a fault of Sally's, but it could be when you do your release schedules, when you update your applications. It could be specific outages at different times. Maybe the rotations were uneven, but they spent the same amount of time. So I think like not letting people burn out on call is something that it's being talked about in the industry, but I don't think we really focus on it enough from like a visualization perspective. You know, um, we've been like told for the last 10 years to graph all the things, but when, when are we going to start graphing the people? <laughs> and that's um, kind of what I think is the answer to the question why. Um, the operations use case, again, it's connecting people faster, reduce the friction to context switch back to wherever you keep your on-call data today, like whether that's a file or an actual SaaS platform. Um, it, it also kind of starts to help you think down the process of getting um, uh, revealing out who's building and running the code that you actually have in production. Some, t some organizations, they have a separate like 24-hour NOC team or an SRE team that isn't necessarily the only people that have to be on call, but you need to be able to connect to those people and those users. So I find that there's um, some use cases there. And then just like democratizing the people behind the metrics. It's a, it's a chance for you to come into the forefront to say like, you know, it's easy to communicate, easy to find people, but at the end of the day, Grafana is really a collaboration platform. And that collaboration is it's very visual, and it gets people uh, into the system. And it's better to know uh, like who's behind the, the systems that are running. And um, from a management perspective, like you can always find room to improve an on-call rotation. Um, previous to being in the position that I'm in now, I was in management at Amgen for a few years. Coming back into the individual like role, it's really obvious to me that managers don't spend a lot of time thinking about on-call rotation. Um, if you are, great, that's that's awesome. But put it in Grafana, and I think you'll find that there's a there's a valued uh, use case there. Um, you know, and, and something I like to think about like. Yeah, blameless postmortems. It's like if you're trying to say, you know, don't blame the person, but blame the system. Um, Adrian Cockcraft at reInvent this year reminded people again that failures are a system problem, but it's the people that are on call that are still part of your system to fix those problems. And so as you're going down the path of what the SRE model of, you know, re removing away the repeatable errors and automating away all of the toil that your on call teams deal with, it's really important to recognize that. The flip side of that is actually recognizing that you've achieved your SLO. How many times have you been congratulated in the last month for 99% uptime? Anybody? <laughs> no. <laughs> so put a face to it. People that are in business, they want to know a little bit about the, you know, the operations teams who can seem very distant from the business sometimes. I think it gives you an opportunity to think about like where in this in your organization it could fit. And it's really simple to to graph in Grafana, as we can see. And um, you know, kind of the takeaway is that your your on-call people are definitely um, part of your system. You should measure the metrics to support them. And I think that uh, Grafana is the right place to do it. And don't overcomplicate it. Find a simple way to collect the data. And, and I think that you'll end up with a, a happier on-call experience. And for those of you that have had like the phantom like buzzes on your cell phone in the middle of the night thinking someone's calling you, 
this gives you a chance to have a conversation where instead of just thinking about, oh, I feel like I'm always being called in the middle of the night, now you have the data to show. And I think that that uh, is what we've, we're all trying to do with our application metrics anyway. So thanks again uh, to the Grafana Labs and the Grafana community. Uh, Amgen is hiring in software, dev, test, and ops. We are located about 20 minutes north of Malibu here in Southern California. So feel free to contact me, and uh, thanks a lot. <laughs>